This week at Bungie needs to be talked about. I have some gameplay in the background to watch as I go through it. I'm gonna put up appropriate screenshots when necessary, but in just a few paragraphs. There's a literal change to how the game is played as we know it. And on the surface, I'm gonna break it down, but let's remember, they have a full product in front of them that they know all about, we don't. We're getting it in waves, and I'm gonna reference some things in the past that can hopefully help find some answers. This week at Bungie was brought to us by Hippie. Leanna Ruppert, GG to her and the community team. There are some good things in here, but there's also some questionable things. And with these questionable things, it might be a place in time where we all just feel kind of stupid going back and looking at this week at Bungie. Like, oh, that's why they did it, or hey, it wasn't that bad, who knows. First up, the artifact mods. Starting in Season 16, players will no longer be limited to the number of artifact mods they can unlock. That means players can feasibly unlock all 25 artifact mods by the end of the season. There's going to be some small adjustments to the amount of XP required to unlock the artifact mods 1-12. through 12. In general, the pace of unlocking the first 12 artifact mods is going to be about the same that we've seen, but for each unlock after 12, they have increased experience for the next artifact mod unlocked. The choice in which to unlock the mod still requires some decision making, and if you change your mind, you can still reset your artifact mod and make your picks again. This is a good thing. Most of the time, these mods clash anyway. Like on the class item this season, Particle Deconstruction, 7 energy. Weathering Heat, 6 energy. That one states that causing damage with a solar ability weakens champions. Focusing Lens, 3 energy. Passive Guard, 6 energy. All of these mods go on the class item in the class item only, which only accepts 10 total energy. So letting me change out these mods freely after having them unlocked instead of constantly resetting my artifact, 60,000, 70,000 glimmer, just to get a separate build going. It's a great change. They say the anti-barrier scout and bows are coming back. They've made overload better, more reliable when you're stunning. Also a new weapon type, the glaive is coming. It's gonna be featured within the artifact. And there's gonna be a mod that's a solution to unstoppable champions. Also, some artifact mods will enhance some of the new weapon perks. So maybe the Throne World weapons, they're going to have a particular perk. You throw this mod on, it makes that perk even better. Could be moving quicker, doing more damage, I don't know. But that one could be interesting. They also changed how Masterwork Armor works. In Witch Queen, you can change the energy type of a fully Masterwork piece of armor for a much reduced cost. A fully masterwork piece of legendary armor can be changed to another energy type for 10,000 glimmer, one upgrade module. Exotics, you can change their type for 20,000 glimmer and one upgrade module. The cost of changing a piece of armor's energy type before it's fully masterwork remains unchanged. This is a very good change. I'm mostly looking at the exotic armor here. Sure, legendary armor, you might want to make a switch, but the exotics are a bigger piece. Maybe you want your Controverse Holds to have Grenade Kickstart. They're solar, you need to switch them to Stasis. You can try them out with Stasis. If you don't like it, switch it back to Solar. Sure, that is 40,000 Glimmer and two upgrade modules to try it out, switch it back. That beats 60 total Legendary Shards, 10 Cores, 10 Prisms, and 6 Ascendant Shards any day, all day. Very good change, great change. But now, the one I want to spend some time on. They're making a change to the way our Guardians create Orbs of Power. And again, reminder, they have a full understanding of what they're doing, we don't, so I'm gonna bring up some things in the past and present on the topic. On the surface, I kinda hate it, but we don't know until we know. And again, we might look back and say, ah, oh, that's why they did this, that's why. Elements of the new weapon crafting system will encourage you to use many different weapons and ask you to burn hard-earned masterwork materials on weapons that you may only be using for a few hours, just to generate orbs. That seemed like a tall order. This, combined with our desire to act on consistent feedback that players want to be able to generate orbs of power with exotic weapons that don't have catalysts yet, led us to the implementation we'll be using in the Witch Queen and beyond. Orb generation on weapon multi-kills will no longer be a function of a weapon's masterwork status, but will instead be provided by a suite of armor mods, which are unlocked automatically for all players, which plug into the helmet armor mod socket. Each such mod will apply the orb generation effect to all weapons that you have equipped of a particular damage type. So a single mod is going to cover multiple weapons in your arsenal if they share the same damage type. This also applies to weapons that changes their damage types like hard light, kinetic weapon with osmosis. They say we will continue to create exciting catalysts over the next few seasons, but in the meantime, you're going to be able to generate orbs with Cloud Strike, Thorn, Thunderlord, Terabaugh, and many other weapons in the game. Okay, first of all, this is game changing. This is a system we've used since the day it was introduced years ago. A system for builds. A system of a full gameplay loop cohesion. Before I get off into it, there are a couple things to keep in mind. In the replies, Leanna said, it's going to be tied into something to be announced later on in the year. And another important one from Kevin Giannis a while back. With the near future, annual expansions are a good time for system level changes, since they get so much more playtest time over a longer duration compared to a normal season. We don't like that the desire for exotic catalysts is largely driven by the orbs of power generation they provide, and they have something in the works to let players build around that limitation. This is it. Weapon differentiation. If you have two void adaptive hand cannons, one from the Suros Foundry, 
one from the latest raid. Why do I care about one more than the other? The stats tend to be fairly close, perk pools can be different, but there are only so many perks, and it's a stretch to say that the perk pool gives the weapon an identity. We have something shipping on all new and reissued weapons in the Witch Queen that addresses this issue directly, and we're working to expand the same solution to all weapons that drop in the future. These tie together, weapon differentiation. There's a big change to weapons brewing. This decision that we're seeing of no more orbs on masterwork weapons is a result of that. We have crafting coming and who knows what they're gonna be doing to the weapons. Maybe redoing the frames, maybe giving them special things for specific activities like in PVP. Maybe this pulse rifle takes less flinch and strikes. This scout has plus 60 more stability. Just throwing things out there. But there does appear to be additions to the weapons coming. Having orbs being tied to armor and not the weapon perk folder means that in theory that innovation should be possible. And hopefully that's exactly what they're doing. More perks on weapons, additional intrinsic perks, and more. Add-ons. As I said though, on the surface, I don't like it. Because on the surface here, orb generation on a masterwork weapon double kill is near vital to a lot of builds. It really is. Everywhere. Say you're in PvE. Being chased by dregs and an overload just kind of teleporting right into your soul. Boom. Double on the dregs. Orb drop. Pick it up. You now have protective light. A simple thing but vital to how we played. In the Crucible, charged with light, high energy fire. Getting a double, picking up the orb. This was a main source of getting charged with light and using those mods. That's for all of them. Firepower, Godslayer Warheads, Reactive Pulse, Surprise Attack. All those builds that were started by that weapon double kill, gone. And now charged with light, using those mods, it has to come from another means, aside from the one that's proposed, the helmet mod. I'm gonna get to that in a second. Maybe you have to spend a mod slot now on Elemental Charge. Become Charged with Light by picking up an Elemental Well. Two stacks if the element matches your subclass type. Then spend another mod on Protective Light. And then there's things like Quick Charge, and you're seeing this right here in PvP. Most weapons have some sort of Quick Charge. Become Charged with Light by rapidly defeating enemies. It instantly happens. Once you get the double, you don't have to go pick up an orb, you're just now Charged with Light. So that might come into play more. This proposed change, Bungie. Why the helmet, man? Because this gets deeper. The helmet has things like hands-on, ashes to assets, dynamo, but it also has targeting and finders. Finders, three energy for sniper, launcher, rockets, and more targeting for aimed on sight speed. And PvP, five energy for snipers, five energy for hand cannon, four for fusions. Really high energy cost, all congested on the helmet. The chest and class item screamed for this new mod. And this new mod on the helmet, we don't know the cost, but it's taking up a slot. And that slot is for the element used. There are two slots on your armor for five elements. Kinetic, Stasis, Void, Arc, and Solar. So you don't even get to cover them all. To get charged with light, getting orbs on doubles. Say you're running Huckleberry and a thousand yard stare. Well, you'd use something like the Kinetic and Void Orb Generation helmet mods, but then you still have your solar rocket launcher. You still have your finders targeting if you need them. It's just heavily congested. That's what I'm not too sure about. In the end though, like I said, maybe weapon orb generation walked so weapon crafting could run. We have no idea what weapon crafting is going to bring. That goes for materials, cost, time, possibility of new perks, new intrinsic perks, and more. I really hope that the juice is worth the squeeze here. It might be. They made this decision, changing this entire system, so it could be. That's what leads me to believe that it might. So I'm going to hold full opinion until we get more info and then ultimately in our hands. But the issue right now for me, it looks real bad. But it's because we don't have all the information. A lot of builds freedom were killed because of this. Everywhere. PvE, PvP, Gambit, doesn't matter. Take the example of the dregs and the overload for protective light. The only thing I'm really not liking is the placement of the mod, then the cost of all the mods in the game congested on the helmet. So maybe more spaces or energy is added to our masterworked armor. That's going to open up space, open up mods, especially if it's combined with the reduction of the mod cost on a lot of mods. Some of them are way too high. Who knows? Time's going to tell. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about these changes down below. What do you think about all this? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.